I'm going to put forth the hypothesis that banks are dying unless they make major changes. And the U.S. dollar is not as necessary as you may think. And you may not want to be holding it. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I put out the dollar is dead episodes talking about how the rich get rich with assets, not by holding U.S. dollars. Stocks, real estate, equities like gold and silver, they go up in value over time. The dollar goes down in value over time. This should frustrate you. Banks don't care about you. They never have. The government doesn't care about you. If you want real financial freedom, that's up to you. Because real freedom is financial freedom. So take this video for informational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm going to explain what's happening in the finance space with regard to crypto. But I'm going to explain what's happening in the finance space because you need to know what's going on. Whether you take action on it or not, totally up to you. It's good information to have. So the hypothesis is banks are no longer necessary. Why? Well, because crypto, something you may or may not have heard of, can be held. We're going to talk about self-custody and utilized as collateral. So in this video, we'll talk about the necessity of banks. We'll talk about, can you actually replace banks with crypto? And is it feasible? Is it possible? Let's see if this hypothesis stands up. We're first going to start with the current banking system and then what's happening, whether or not the mainstream media is telling you, whether or not big banks are telling you, it's happening right now where people are utilizing the crypto space as opposed to banks. So first, I'm going to show you the current banking system, the crypto alternative. Then we're going to get into the pluses and the minuses, the pros and the cons. And lastly, like we said, is it even feasible? All right. So currently on the left side here, we've got the bank system. We're going to call that centralized. What does that mean? Well, you and I and others put our money into the bank. That's supposed to be a bank vault. And then the bank can loan out that money. Now, you might put get a 1% rate. Current rates might even be as high as 4 because interest rates are high. And then this person gets a car loan and it might be 8 to 12. Or it might be 18%. They might get a mortgage. The bank is in the center. People putting money in, people getting loans of that out. The bank is centralized. It's usually a corporation. It could be shareholders. It could be privately owned. They're there to make a profit. So they take a large differential represented by this large banking spot. They take that differential. So you are not, they're not here for your benefit. They're giving you a nominal rate because of inflation, because of taxes. Chances are what you're getting won't even keep up with inflation. Chances are you're actually losing buying power by having money sitting in a bank. That's not helping you at all. Who's it helping? It's helping the bank because while you're getting that one to 4% and inflation's 3% and taxes are depending upon your bracket, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35% state tax, gas tax, property tax, grocery tax, sales tax, all of that. The banks are reaping high returns. That's a centralized system. Everything goes into this one spot and then it goes out. All right. What could be an alternative? Well, in the crypto world, the crypto is decentralized. There isn't a central organization. There is a decentralized organization. It can be run many different ways. They have voting tokens and things, but without getting into that, it's more of a, here are the people with the money and here are people that want to get the money or other things that can provide yield like treasury T-bills and things like that on this side. And it's more of a, not a direct one-to-one, -one, but the money on this side is getting to the money on this side and the yield or percentage is getting paid back to this side. The amount, this is the banks taking a large chunk, the amount that's taken to perform these transactions is very low, typically a transaction fee or maybe a small percentage of the differential, but it's not a 1% to 12 or 4% to 18 differential. It's substantially smaller and it's in a decentralized way with these people, with the money, having control over their money and holding their assets. But let's get into the pros and cons and how are these two things really different? All right, now we're gonna go into the pros and cons. 
please pay very close attention to this because there are some nuances which have huge repercussions to the way things are currently done and how it puts the power back into your hands and the control back into your hands. This is going to scare a lot of people. Let's just get it out of the way. At the moment, the crypto is riskier. Less regulations, possibly security issues. There are some things to consider at the moment because FDIC for banks is going to back it up up to a quarter of a million dollars per account with FDIC government insurance. It doesn't exist in the crypto space, but trust, that as time goes on, a lot of these concerns will be alleviated. Again, for informational purposes, you may not want to do this at the moment, but understand what's happening because it's happening every day now, you'd be surprised. This is the most important thing to understand. Assets, not dollars. What do I mean by that? Scenario one, you wanna buy a used car. You save up 20,000 US dollars in your bank account, right? Over time, you're making your deposits. And then when you're ready, you take the $20,000 out, okay? During that time, as you were saving up the money for the car, you were holding on to dollars. As we know, dollars go down in value because of inflation. So you're losing buying power. So you don't really wanna hold dollars. The other option is you can go to the bank and you can get a loan. They'll have a percentage rate, whatever the banks want. We'll get into that in a second. The other scenario is with crypto, what you do is your $20,000 worth of value is assets. You're not holding, in this case, it was dollars in your bank account. In this case, it's assets, meaning you're holding on to crypto assets, whether it be Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it is. Just like you might think that's crazy. That makes no sense. Well, think about your account at Fidelity. Your assets are the stock. You have 100 shares of Verizon, whatever it's trading at, 40 bucks, okay? If they'll say in your account, you have $4,000 worth of Verizon, but you're not holding dollars in that account. There are no dollars in that account. It's just a certificate for those 100 shares of stock, which at the moment have a value of $4,000. Just like if you had crypto, there's one called Ethereum, not going to get into too much detail, depending upon how this video goes and how the comments go, I may go into more detail, but you hold, a, let's say, Ethereum. It's an asset. It can go down in value, just like Verizon can go down in value. It can go up in value, but dollars, as we know, are going down in value. If you have assets, they could go up in value. So again, you're getting more control, but it is riskier. So here's what you do. You would save up $20,000, let's say, of Ethereum. Then you put it on the decentralized exchange as collateral. It's being held. Think of a third party holding on to something, right? What happens when you get a car and you have a car loan? You think, I own the car. No, you don't. You don't have the title. When do you get the title? The title sent to you once you pay it off. It's being held by someone else until you pay it off. The collateral is being held until you pay it off. So now you're not going to be able to take out, there's a loan to value. And it could be, let's just say in this example, I'm saying 80%, $16,000. So to get 20, you might have to have a little more. These are called over collateralized. That's part of what needs to happen in order for this system to work. You're gonna be over collateralized. Now, that doesn't mean you're paying more. It just means the loan amount has to be less than the amount that the assets are worth. Now, there are issues with what's called a margin call, essentially, let's call it that for the moment, which basically means, just like with stocks, if you've taken a margin loan on your stocks or a loan against your stocks and the stocks go down in value, if the stocks go down too much, they might get worried you can't pay it back, so they'll sell some of the stock to cover some of the difference. The same thing happens here. If the value of the assets goes down to an uncomfortable level, and they tell you what the level is, then they might sell some to cover some of the loan. On the flip side, if the assets go up in value, they don't do anything. Now here's what's really interesting. So the difference in this is, do you wanna hold dollars or do you wanna hold assets? I'm gonna show you in a moment after we go through this that you hold way less dollars than you might think. Okay, what are the pros of this? This is what's really interesting. Well, typically the percentage rate is cheaper. You remember the bank that was centralized giving you a 1% rate or a 1% rate for those making deposits and sending out, giving out loans at 12, 18% for cars. Well, you'll see at this moment in time, 
they're much cheaper, around like 6%. So you're getting a cheaper rate because the person is getting a higher rate on their money. It's a win-win for both. Through a decentralized system, people who are putting money in are getting a higher rate and people that are taking it out are paying a lower rate than they would through the centralized. Here's what's really interesting. Guess what? There's no process, meaning there's no denials. You won't get denied for the loan. But you're gonna get the loan because it's over collateralized. You're not calling anyone up. They're not asking for your social security number. They're not asking where you work. They're not asking what your income is. They're not asking all the invasive questions and telling you, oh, sorry, you can't have it. Or, oh, yeah, maybe you can. You have to go through all this rigmarole. No, you put the collateral up, you get the loan. Instantly, no denials. The control is in your hands. You want the loan, you get it. Guess what? There are no loan payments. Loan payments consist of principal and interest. When you get a traditional loan for a car, every month you're gonna make a payment. It's gonna include principal and interest. If you get a loan currently through a stockbroker, a margin loan, chances are it's an interest only payment. You don't pay principal, you just pay the interest and you pay back the principal when you can. With this, you don't pay principal, you don't pay interest. You say that's impossible. Well, as long as the assets don't go down in value and they don't break that threshold, as long as they're going, they're steady or they're going up, you will accrue interest. So if you take that $16,000 loan and each month it's $12 in interest, then each month it goes up and you owe $12 more. You know, so two months go by and you owe $16,024, whatever it works out to be. You're still going to owe that amount of money, but you don't have to make the payments. You can make them when you want or need to. Now, you might need to if the value goes down, or you might want to because you do have to pay it back at some point, right? Because eventually, this will add up to an amount that's more than what you've collateralized. Unless you just keep collateralizing it, and you never pay it back. So you don't have to make those, but you can, and you want, you'll want to, because you're obviously you're gonna to wanna to pay it back, but you can pay any amount you want. So if this month you can make a $500 payment, okay. If next month something comes up and you can't make a payment, don't. Month after you can make a payment, all right. You control the payments. Again, as long as the assets are steady or going up so that you don't hit that liquidation clause, any amount you want. By the way, if you wanted to, you could at any time just pay with the assets. You could say, you know what? I'm just going ahead and sell $16,000 worth of the collateral and pay it off, plus the interest. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Or these go up in value. What if it doubles? What if it goes to $40,000? Well, sell 16,000 worth. You're left with 24,000 and you paid off your loan because you have the control and dollars don't go up in value. That's why you're not holding dollars. You're under the new system. You're holding assets. And if the assets go up, you win. You have the control. You get to keep your assets. Your assets are now worth more. So much more that you paid off your loan. Did that happen in a bank system? No, why? The bank has all the control. The bank has all the assets. And the bank is holding it. Two more things that I want to point out. Have you heard of a bank run? Impossible. Bank run is possible. That means that banks have uninsured deposits and they don't have enough money on hand to give it out if everyone shows up at their door and says, we wanna take our money out. Uninsured deposits, that just means that someone might have more than the 250,000 in an account and all that, let's say they have 500,000. So if they think a bank might have a problem, it increases the percentage of chance that they might wanna take their money out. So if they think that bank's having a problem, and some of their money isn't insured because they have more than the 250000 in an account. They might want to pull that money out. So might a bunch of people. They all go. Guess what? The bank doesn't have enough money. The bank doesn't actually hold the amount of money that they say they have in deposit. So if people have deposited $10 million, well, they've lent it out. They've done other things with it. That's a whole other discussion about fractional banking. But essentially, they may only have 500000 actual dollars. They start giving that out. And then it's gone and no one else can get any money. That's a bank run. It happened recently, the bank ran out of business, another bank bought it. Guess what? This is interesting. When you put your money in the bank, the bank has the money and they give you a statement that says you have this much money in the bank. It doesn't actually mean you have that much money in the bank. It's actually an IOU. It means that they owe you that money. Because remember, they may not have enough to cover it. Well, that's not a good thought. I thought I'd put my stuff over there and I thought I could just go at any time and get my stuff back. Not necessarily. Okay, so they're in control because they stand between you and your stuff. 
Well, with crypto, your assets, your cryptocurrency is in a wallet, just like any wallet. Now, I'm not going to get into it, but there are centralized exchanges. There are a self-custody wallet. It's where you have complete control. There's hot ones. There's cold ones, meaning it's not connected to a computer or anything. So you can literally have the password to it and you and you alone hold those assets. Now, when you put them up for collateral, you're moving them onto a lending exchange, a DeFi exchange, but you don't have to put all your assets up for collateral. Remember, you're only doing that if you want to either obtain a yield, make some money on it, or you want to put some of it up so that you can get a loan and get some dollars. Why do you want to do that? If you already have it, why don't you just use it to pay it? Well, because you want to borrow dollars to buy something. You want to keep your assets because they're going up in value. Every wealthy person, whether it be the founder of Facebook or Tesla, they're not selling stock to pay for things. They keep their stock. It's valuable. It's going up. They borrow against it and they take loans out in dollars because they know they don't want to hold dollars. They want to keep their assets. This allows you, the individual, to do exactly what the wealthy are doing. And you have complete control of the assets, not the bank. This is the future. No, it's not actually. It's the present. It's happening now. I'm doing it right now. Everything I just explained, I'm currently doing. It works. Now, let's talk about why I think banks in the US dollar are dying and why you don't have as many dollars as you think you might. All right, two more things to go over. And the next is feasibility. I think you'll be surprised how easy this is. And you'll be surprised how many banks and institutions are doing this, implementing it, and no one's even realizing it because they're not talking about it. Banks are dying. The dollar, the US dollar, is dead. All right, banks dying. As we noted, banks are holding on to your dollars. Your dollars are going down in value. You don't want to hold dollars. You want to hold assets. So by using these wallets, you're able to hold crypto if you like. You might say, well, it's volatile. It's riskier. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, there are what's called stable coins. I should have written here. Stable coins, meaning just like there are mutual funds, which hold, I believe T. Rose is called maybe prime reserve, I think. I could be wrong, but whatever you put in, you're buying those shares. You no longer have dollars, but each share is pegged at a dollar. It doesn't go up and down in value, so you can redeem it at any time for dollars. Okay, that's what stable coins are. Stable coins are backed by assets. They have different ones work in different ways. USDT, USDC, there's many of them. I think PayPal is coming out with their own stable coin. Many different people are doing it and stable coins are pegged at a dollar such that you can hold assets and you can hold coins that are a dollar, but you're not actually holding US dollars. Could be backed by all sorts of assets and you can hold assets. So this is why banks are no longer needed. Just showed you the pros and the cons. Banks themselves are really dying because they're not holding assets. And when you go to sell your assets, you put them on what's called an exchange, just like your stock certificates are on the Fidelity exchange, such that you can then sell them on the New York Stock Exchange. Fidelity isn't an exchange. Fidelity is holding it on your behalf and you're able to sell it through the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ exchange. That's all happening in the background. Same with assets. You can take them out of your wallet and put them into a Fidelity-like exchange and then sell them on the exchange. Turn them into dollars if you so choose or another asset. Banks are no longer needed because banks are holding dollars and no one wants dollars anymore because the US dollar is debt. If you think of your own personal balance sheet, what do you have and then what do you owe? So if you have a $200,000 house and you owe $100,000 on the mortgage, what do you have? Well, the difference is $100,000. So you would have $100,000 on your balance sheet because you're positive. So if you were to sell the house, you take the 200, you pay off the 100,000 mortgage and you're left with 100 grand. So you say, okay, I have a house and it has value. And you think of the value in terms of dollars. I think, I think I've got a hundred thousand worth of equity in my home. I owe 10,000 on my car. It's worth 15. I got 5,000 there. I've got stock certificates. You look in your Fidelity account or whoever your broker is and they represent everything in dollars, right? You look at your account and you say, how many dollars do I have? Okay, hold on. Commodities, gold, silver, they have a dollar value, belongings, jewelry. That's a necklace. Yeah, it's a great drawing. I know. And then you've got a bank account. Okay. These things, house, car, stock, commodity, belongings. You look at your fidelity statement, you see a dollar amount. 
You look at a statement that shows you how much, how many dollars worth of gold you have. None of these are dollars. Nope. You don't have any dollars here. You do not have any dollars. If you sell your house for dollars, then you'll have some. You're converting it. You're converting a car. You're converting stock. You're converting commodities. You're converting jewelry. Just like you converted a crypto asset to dollars if you'd like to do that. If you have a bank account with a checking or savings, those are dollars. So let's say you have a net worth of 640000 I don't know what the average savings account is now. This is 2024 when I'm making this video, August. For the average American, savings is really low. They don't have hardly any dollars at all. So most people, regardless of what their net worth is, are probably not holding a lot of dollars. They may, also, they may have dollar equivalents. They may be swapping things in and out of treasury bills, buying a three-month treasury every now and then, buying a six-month, letting them roll over, buying some CDs. Those are cash equivalents. They're not cash. How many dollars you actually have, you'd be surprised. It's way less than you think. That's good. You'd rather have assets because assets go up in value. In the dollar over the last hundred years, I'll show what I always show this one particular article. Over the last hundred years, the dollar's lost 99% of its value. The dollar just goes down in value because of inflation, taxes, and everything. You're getting destroyed. Okay. Now you might be thinking, well, I like the pros and cons. How possible is that? Can I actually do that? Can I debank myself? You can. How feasible is it? I'll show you. All right. Believe it or not, this has been happening. Banks aren't telling you about it. No one's really telling you about it. But have you heard of MasterCard? Of course you have. They're working with a company, MetaMask. MasterCard and MetaMask are working together. MetaMask is a wallet for holding assets, crypto assets or those stable coins. And you'll be able to use your MasterCard anywhere MasterCard's accepted. And when you use it, it takes assets or stable coins out of your crypto wallet and pays for it. You have your assets, your crypto, and you want to buy $50 worth of something at Home Depot. So it says, okay, at the moment you go to pay, it grabs some assets, it sells $50 worth. And then through your MasterCard, it pays Home Depot in dollars. It just happens immediately. So you never really had any dollars. None. No dollars. You don't need them. Your assets were sold instantly, turned into dollars, and then quick, you got rid of them. It's like a hot potato. It's like, I have these assets, and I want to buy all that mulch. What am I going to do? Well, quick, sell them, turn them into dollars. Ooh, dollars, dollars. Ooh, I don't want them. And they're gone. Now Home Depot has them. These are, ooh, ooh, dollars. I don't want dollars. I want assets. So you held dollars for like a split second. Where's MasterCard accepted? <sighs> Everywhere. I mean, after recent events of the last couple of years, it's almost a cashless society. All right. Visa. They're working with one called Coinbase. Coinbase has a wallet. Coinbase, ha Coinbase has an exchange. Very popular for crypto. Buy, sell crypto just like you can on MetaMask. They're working with Visa. Both of these saw the writing on the wall. And they realized that banks were dying. And if people were putting their assets here and here in crypto wallets, whether it be stable coins or crypto, remember stable coins aren't as risky because it's pegged to the to a dollar. They said, oh my gosh, banks are out of the equation. We better start working with these guys and with these guys. You may not have heard this. It's happening. I do this right now. And I can tell it. When I go to Home Depot or wherever I go to buy something, a cup of coffee, I want it to sell some of this asset. Or I can say, nah, sell that asset. Or sell the stable coins, which are the equivalent of dollars. And it happens instantaneously and it's given. So I no longer have a bank, no bank, and I no longer have dollars. Just a quick hot potato dollar. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's your three dollars. Give me the coffee. Okay. Apple is working with one called Circle, and I believe they're help. They're going to be sell, um, spending USDC, which is a stable coin. So look, I'm making the argument that this is going to happen. I don't know why I'm making the hypothesis or the argument that it's happening when it's happening. It's already happening. People are already doing it right now. Watch this at your job they pay you you can send your payroll right to the bank right that's usually what people do through an ACH or whatever it just appears in your bank account there's your payroll but if you don't want banks anymore you can have it go right to something like Coinbase that looks up your payroll you can turn it right into something like USDC or USDT 
which is a, you know, the equivalent of a dollar essentially. And then you can go using your Visa debit, go wherever you want, use your Visa card, spend it. Guess what? You sh the company said, I'm going to give you dollars. And you said, oh, I don't want dollars, I want assets. Put it in my Coinbase. Turn it into anything. Turn it into any crypto you want. Turn it into Bitcoin. Turn it into Ethereum. Turn it into a stable coin. Use your debit card, spend it. This is happening right now. I do it all the time. So there you go. My hypothesis is the banks are going to have to change dramatically or they're just going to die. And dollars, as I show every Friday, go down in value. You don't want to hold them. You want to hold assets. Now you have a chance to do everything that the wealthy does. And this might kill our banking system as we know it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I want it to be for informational purposes. I wouldn't be surprised that if some of these things change dramatically after this video is out there, but please do leave your comments. I think this is August of 2024. I hope this opens your eyes to what is happening and what is possible. Informational purposes only. Do with it what you wish. I just help to try educate. Please do subscribe. If you find value in this, I appreciate a like and look at my other videos to help people get out of debt and preserve their wealth, their assets like the wealthy do. Have a great day.